This is section 22 of Presidential Farewell and Last Addresses. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Presidential Farewell and Last Addresses. President Andrew Johnson's Last Address to Congress. The State of the Union Address of December 9th, 1868. Part 2. Read by John Greenman. The Postmaster General's Report furnishes a full and clear exhibit of the operations and condition of the postal service the ordinary postal revenue for the fiscal year ending june thirtieth eighteen sixty eight was sixteen million two hundred ninety two thousand six hundred dollars and the total expenditures embracing all the service for which special appropriations have been made by congress amounted to twenty two million seven hundred and thirty thousand five hundred and ninety two dollars showing an excess of expenditures of $6,437,991, deducting from the expenditures the sum of $1,896,525, the amount of appropriations for ocean steamship and other special service, the excess of expenditures was $4,541,466, by using an unexpended balance in the treasury of three million eight hundred thousand dollars the actual sum for which a special appropriation is required to meet the deficiency is seven hundred and forty one thousand four hundred and sixty six dollars the causes which produced this large excess of expenditure over revenue were the restoration of service in the late insurgent states and the putting into operation of new service established by acts of congress which amounted within the last two years and a half to about forty eight thousand seven hundred miles equal to more than one-third of the whole amount of the service at the close of the war new postal conventions with great britain north germany belgium the netherlands switzerland and italy respectively have been carried into effect under their provisions important improvements have resulted in reduced rates of international postage and enlarged mail facilities with european countries the cost of the united states transatlantic ocean mail service since january first eighteen sixty eight has been largely lessened under the operation of these new conventions a reduction of over one-half having been effected under the new arrangements for ocean mail steamship service which went into effect on that date. The attention of Congress is invited to the practical suggestions and recommendations made in his report by the Postmaster General. No important question has occurred during the last year in our accustomed cordial and friendly intercourse with Costa Rica, Guatemala, Honduras, San Salvador, France, Austria, Belgium, Switzerland, portugal the netherlands denmark sweden and norway rome greece turkey persia egypt liberia morocco tripoli tunis muscat siam borneo and madagascar cordial relations have also been maintained with the argentine and the oriental republics the expressed wish of Congress that our national good offices might be tendered to those republics, and also to Brazil and Paraguay, for bringing to an end the calamitous war which has so long been raging in the valley of the La Plata, has been assiduously complied with and kindly acknowledged by all the belligerents. That important negotiation, however, has thus far been without result." charles a washburn late united states minister to paraguay having resigned and being desirous to return to the united states the rear admiral commanding the south atlantic squadron was early directed to send a ship of war to asuncion the capital of paraguay to receive mr washburn and his family and remove them from a situation which was represented to be endangered by faction and foreign war the brazilian commander of the allied invading forces refused permission to the wasp to pass through the blockading forces and that vessel returned to its accustomed anchorage remonstrance having been made against this refusal it was promptly overruled and the wasp therefore resumed her errand 
received Mr. Washburn and his family, and conveyed them to a safe and convenient seaport. In the meantime an excited controversy had arisen between the President of Paraguay and the late United States Minister, which, it is understood, grew out of his proceedings in giving asylum in the United States legation to alleged enemies of that republic. The question of the right to give asylum is one always difficult and often productive of great embarrassment. In states well organized and established, foreign powers refuse either to concede or exercise that right, except as to persons actually belonging to the diplomatic service. On the other hand, all such powers insist upon exercising the right of asylum in states where the law of nations is not fully acknowledged, respected, and obeyed. The President of Paraguay is understood to have opposed to Mr. Washburn's proceedings the injurious and very improbable charge of personal complicity in insurrection and treason. The correspondence, however, has not yet reached the United States. Mr. Washburn, in connection with this controversy, represents that two United States citizens attached to the legation were arbitrarily seized at his side when leaving the capital of Paraguay, committed to prison, and there subjected to torture for the purpose of procuring confessions of their own criminality and testimony to support the President's allegation against the United States Minister. Mr. McMahon, the newly appointed minister to Paraguay, having reached the La Plata, has been instructed to proceed without delay to Asuncion, there to investigate the whole subject. The rear admiral commanding the United States South Atlantic Squadron has been directed to attend the new minister with a proper naval force to sustain such just demands as the occasion may require, and to vindicate the rights of the United States citizens referred to, and of any others who may be exposed to danger in the theater of war. With these exceptions, friendly relations have been maintained between the United States and Brazil and Paraguay. Our relations during the past year with Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru, and Chile have become especially friendly and cordial. Spain and the republics of Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador have expressed their willingness to accept the mediation of the United States for terminating the war upon the South Pacific coast. Chile has not finally declared upon the question. In the meantime, the conflict has practically exhausted itself, since no belligerent or hostile movement has been made by either party during the last two years, and there are no indications of a present purpose to resume hostilities on either side. Great Britain and France have cordially seconded our proposition of mediation, and I do not forego the hope that it may soon be accepted by all the belligerents, and lead to a secure establishment of peace and friendly relations between the Spanish-American republics of the Pacific and Spain, a result which would be attended with common benefits to the belligerents and much advantage to all commercial nations. I communicate for the consideration of Congress a correspondence which shows that the Bolivian Republic has established the extremely liberal principle of receiving into its citizenship any citizen of the United States or of any other of the American republics upon the simple condition of voluntary registry. The correspondence herewith submitted will be found painfully replete with accounts of the ruin and wretchedness produced by recent earthquakes of unparalleled severity in the republics of Peru, Ecuador, and Bolivia. The diplomatic agents and naval officers of the United States who were present in those countries at the time of those disasters furnished all the relief in their power to the sufferers and were promptly rewarded with grateful and touching acknowledgments by the Congress of Peru. An appeal to the charity of our fellow citizens has been answered by much liberality. In this connection, I submit an appeal which has been made by the Swiss Republic, whose government and institutions are kindred to our own, in behalf of its inhabitants, who are suffering extreme destitution, produced by recent devastating inundations. Our relations with Mexico during the year have been marked by an increasing growth of mutual confidence. 
the mexican government has not yet acted upon the three treaties celebrated here last summer for establishing the rights of naturalized citizens upon a liberal and just basis for regulating consular powers and for the adjustment of mutual claims all commercial nations as well as all friends of republican institutions have occasion to regret the frequent local disturbances which occur in some of the constituent states of colombia nothing has occurred however to affect the harmony and cordial friendship which have for several years existed between that youthful and vigorous republic and our own negotiations are pending with a view to the survey and construction of a ship canal across the isthmus of darien under the auspices of the united states i hope to be able to submit the results of that negotiation to the senate during its present session the very liberal treaty which was entered into last year by the united states and nicaragua has been ratified by the latter republic costa rica with the earnestness of a sincerely friendly neighbor solicits a reciprocity of trade which i commend to the consideration of congress the convention created by treaty between the united states and venezuela in july eighteen sixty five for the mutual adjustment of claims has been held and its decisions have been received at the department of state the heretofore recognized government of the united states of venezuela has been subverted a provisional government having been instituted under circumstances which promise durability it has been formally recognized i have been reluctantly obliged to ask explanation and satisfaction for national injuries committed by the president of haiti the political and social condition of the republics of haiti and santo domingo is very unsatisfactory and painful the abolition of slavery which has been carried into effect throughout the island of santo domingo and the entire west indies except the spanish islands of cuba and puerto rico has been followed by a profound popular conviction of the rightfulness of republican institutions and an intense desire to secure them the attempt however to establish republics there encounters many obstacles most of which may be supposed to result from long indulged habits of colonial supineness and dependence upon european monarchical powers while the united states have on all occasions professed a decided unwillingness that any part of this continent or of its adjacent islands shall be made a theatre for a new establishment of monarchical power too little has been done by us on the other hand to attach the communities by which we are surrounded to our own country or to lend even a moral support to the efforts they are so resolutely and so constantly making to secure republican institutions for themselves it is indeed a question of grave consideration whether our recent and present example is not calculated to check the growth and expansion of free principles and make those communities distrust if not dread a government which at will consigns to military domination states that are integral parts of our federal union and while ready to resist any attempts by other nations to extend to this hemisphere the monarchical institutions of europe assumes to establish over a large portion of its people a rule more absolute harsh and tyrannical than any known to civilized powers the acquisition of alaska was made with the view of extending national jurisdiction and republican principles in the american hemisphere believing that a further step could be taken in the same direction i last year entered into a treaty with the king of denmark for the purchase of the islands of st thomas and st john on the best terms then attainable and with the express consent of the people of those islands this treaty still remains under consideration in the senate a new convention has been entered into with denmark enlarging the time fixed for final ratification of the original treaty comprehensive national policy would seem to sanction the acquisition and incorporation into our federal union of the several adjacent continental and insular communities as speedily as it can be done peacefully lawfully and without any violation of national justice 
faith or honor foreign possession or control of those communities has hitherto hindered the growth and impaired the influence of the united states chronic revolution and anarchy there would be equally injurious each one of them when firmly established as an independent republic or when incorporated into the united states would be a new source of strength and power conforming my administration to these principles i have on no occasion lent support or toleration to unlawful expeditions set on foot upon the plea of republican propagandism or of national extension or aggrandizement the necessity however of repressing such unlawful movements clearly indicates the duty which rests upon us of adapting our legislative action to the new circumstances of a decline of european monarchical power and influence and the increase of american republican ideas interests and sympathies it cannot be long before it will become necessary for this government to lend some effective aid to the solution of the political and social problems which are continually kept before the world by the two republics of the island of santo domingo and which are now disclosing themselves more distinctly than heretofore in the island of cuba the subject is commended to your consideration with all the more earnestness because i am satisfied that the time has arrived when even so direct a proceeding as a proposition for an annexation of the two republics of the island of santo domingo would not only receive the consent of the people interested but would also give satisfaction to all other foreign nations i am aware that upon the question of further extending our possessions it is apprehended by some that our political system cannot successfully be applied to an area more extended than our continent but the conviction is rapidly gaining ground in the american mind that with the increased facilities for intercommunication between all portions of the earth the principles of free government as embraced in our constitution if faithfully maintained and carried out would prove of sufficient strength and breadth to comprehend within their sphere and influence the civilized nations of the world the attention of the senate and of congress is again respectfully invited to the treaty for the establishment of commercial reciprocity with the hawaiian kingdom entered into last year and already ratified by that government the attitude of the united states toward these islands is not very different from that in which they stand toward the west indies it is known and felt by the hawaiian government and people that their government and institutions are feeble and precarious that the united states being so near a neighbor would be unwilling to see the islands pass under foreign control their prosperity is continually disturbed by expectations and alarms of unfriendly political proceedings as well from the united states as from other foreign powers a reciprocity treaty while it could not materially diminish the revenues of the united states would be a guarantee of the goodwill and forbearance of all nations until the people of the islands shall of themselves at no distant day voluntarily apply for admission into the union the emperor of russia has acceded to the treaty negotiated here in january last for the security of trademarks in the interest of manufacturers and commerce i have invited his attention to the importance of establishing now while it seems easy and practicable a fair and equal regulation of the vast fisheries belonging to the two nations in the waters of the north pacific ocean the two treaties between the united states and italy for the regulation of consular powers and the extradition of criminals negotiated and ratified here during the last session of congress have been accepted and confirmed by the italian government a liberal consular convention which has been negotiated with belgium will be submitted to the senate the very important treaties which were negotiated between the united states and north germany and bavaria for the regulation of the rights of naturalized citizens have been duly ratified and exchanged and similar treaties 
have been entered into with the kingdoms of belgium and wurttemberg and with the grand duchies of baden and hesse darmstadt i hope soon to be able to submit equally satisfactory conventions of the same character now in the course of negotiation with the respective governments of spain italy and the ottoman empire examination of claims against the united states by the hudson's bay company and the puget sound agricultural company on account of certain possessory rights in the state of oregon and territory of washington alleged by those companies in virtue of provisions of the treaty between the united states and great britain of june fifteenth eighteen forty six has been diligently prosecuted under the direction of the joint international commission to which they were submitted for adjudication by treaty between the two governments of july first eighteen sixty three and will it is expected be concluded at an early day no practical regulation concerning colonial trade and the fisheries can be accomplished by treaty between the united states and great britain until congress shall have expressed their judgment concerning the principles involved three other questions however between the united states and great britain remain open for adjustment these are the mutual rights of naturalized citizens the boundary question involving the title to the island of san juan on the pacific coast and mutual claims arising since the year eighteen fifty three of the citizens and subjects of the two countries for injuries and depredations committed under the authority of their respective governments negotiations upon these subjects are pending and i am not without hope of being able to lay before the senate for its consideration during the present session protocols calculated to bring to an end these justly exciting and long-existing controversies we are not advised of the action of the chinese government upon the liberal and auspicious treaty which was recently celebrated with its plenipotentiaries at this capital japan remains a theatre of civil war marked by religious incidents and political severities peculiar to that long isolated empire the executive has hitherto maintained strict neutrality among the belligerents and acknowledges with pleasure that it has been frankly and fully sustained in that course by the enlightened concurrence and cooperation of the other treaty powers namely great britain france the netherlands north germany and italy spain having recently undergone a revolution marked by extraordinary unanimity and preservation of order the provisional government established at madrid has been recognized and the friendly intercourse which has so long happily existed between two countries remains unchanged i renew the recommendation contained in my communication to congress dated the eighteenth july last a copy of which accompanies this message that the judgment of the people should be taken on the propriety of so amending the federal constitution that it shall provide first for an election of president and vice president by a direct vote of the people instead of through the agency of electors and making them ineligible for re-election to a second term second for a distinct designation of the person who shall discharge the duties of president in the event of a vacancy in that office by the death resignation or removal of both the president and vice president third for the election of senators of the united states directly by the people of the several states instead of by the legislatures and fourth for the limitation to a period of years of the terms of federal judges profoundly impressed with the propriety of making these important modifications in the constitution i respectfully submit them for the early and mature consideration of congress we should as far as possible remove all pretexts for violations of the organic law by remedying such imperfections as time and experience may develop ever remembering that quote, the constitution which at any time exists until changed by an explicit and authentic act of the whole people is sacredly obligatory upon all unquote. 
in the performance of a duty imposed upon me by the constitution i have thus communicated to congress information of the state of the union and recommended for their consideration such measures as have seemed to me necessary and expedient if carried into effect they will hasten the accomplishment of the great and beneficent purposes for which the constitution was ordained and which it comprehensively states were quote, to form a more perfect union establish justice ensure domestic tranquillity provide for the common defense promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity unquote. in congress are vested all legislative powers and upon them devolves the responsibility as well for framing unwise and excessive laws as for neglecting to devise and adopt measures absolutely demanded by the wants of the country let us earnestly hope that before the expiration of our respective terms of service now rapidly drawing to a close an all-wise providence will so guide our counsels as to strengthen and preserve the federal unions inspire reverence for the constitution restore prosperity and happiness to our whole people and promote quote, on earth peace good will toward men unquote. end of president andrew johnson's last state of the state address december ninth eighteen sixty eight read by john greenman